controlling the movement of traffic with rules and laws makes driving orderly and safe. Ignoring or breaking rules is doing the unexpected, and suddenly you become a threat to others. Collision is certain. Collision is certain. Collision, collision. It's only a matter of when. As long as everyone follows the rules and is considerate of others, we can relax and enjoy driving. Enjoy driving, enjoy driving, enjoy driving. Without rules, the unexpected can be trouble. Hello friends, my name is Real Mail, and welcome back to a brand new Let's Play here on my channel. This is Demolition Racer for the PlayStation 1, released in 1999, and yeah, it's a pretty swagging game, and I figured I'd play through it as a bit of an impromptu Let's Play to finish off the year, because I don't have any content to go out, so this will have to do. Anyways, um, speaking of impromptu stuff, I also have Frendo with me. Introduce yourself, Frendo. Hi, I'm Thunder. You probably know me from HG Central. He dragged me over to do this for him. Yeah, because he's the only other person who I've ever heard of who knows about this particular game. Even though I lp the Dreamcast version on my channel, so... Yeah, go watch that. That's probably gonna end up better than this one. Anyways... Even though it was my first LP. Exactly. <laughs> hey, we're however many strong and it's still terrible. Anyways, um... For the purposes of this let's play, we won't touch the single race mode because there's nothing to really be gained from there. We're going to be looking at the Demolition League and, well, we're going to have to enter a name and stuff, so let's use a 1999 keyboard to do so. That makes loud that, that really... noises. Yeah, it does have loud sounds, and whenever you hit enter, the car revs very loud. Indeed. Why? Yes. Because that, that's clearly that's what all 1999 keyboards did. So 90s. Anyways, uh, we have, as you can see, quite a few leagues to go through. We have the Rookie League, Semi Pro League, Pro League, Endurance League, and the Arena League. For the purposes of this first episode, we're going to be starting in the Rookie League, and we need to pick a car, and there's several to choose from. We have the Marauder, which is a muscle car thing. We have the Bobcat, which is basically a Say Ibiza. And we have a cruiser, which is a big American thing, and then there's a bunch of cars which are locked. Are you sure about that Bobcat being a Seat? Because it honestly looks like a Ford Fiesta. It's a Seat, shut up. <laughs> right. I don't know. Uh, we are going to be using the cruiser because it's the most armoured vehicle, and y you'll see why that's important in a second. Anyways, a uh, colour scheme on this thing doesn't really matter, but... And probably do. Now, if I can ask a question real quick, are you sure your voice is being recorded? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm at least 65% sure it's being recorded. 65% <laughs> sure? Yes. And before you watch this back and you realize, oh shit, it wasn't. In that case, it's a learning experience. Anyways, there's some car customization. Woo, it's Need for Speed on the ground. Alright, let's get into this and, well, do the Rookie League. Uh, we're going to be heading to an aircraft carrier first, apparently. I will say you you honestly used one of the cars I would have probably used first because the thing with the cruiser is it takes such a good beating so you can just constantly wail on your opponents and get a lot of points when that's then that's really what makes it very useful the the bobcat is terrible to use mostly because it has this really awkward handling system with it where any slight movement gets into this like weird slide and it's really bad. Oh, I tried so. using the Bobcat one of the first times I tried to record this, which has been several over this year, and, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't a good choice. Evidently. Yeah, I like how I like how it took you to the end of this year to finally try this again. Yeah, I've been wanting to do this Let's Play for about half of this year, and I've decided, hey, we'll finish the year off in this, because finally, we've finally figured out how to do stuff. Anyways. Yeah, but so, for the, so for those of you who have never actually played this game, uh, basically, the whole idea is you kind of have a two-in-one system working for you. You want to finish high, but you also want to get as many points as you can. 
which usually means you have to weigh on your opponents as much as possible, rack as much damage to them, and basically just go all out. I'm essentially going to have the more... to wait for them here. There we go. Yeah, because you don't want to just suddenly get so far ahead of them and, ju and then just go thinking you're going to be fine. Because if you're not making any points and all the people behind you who are constantly still hitting each other will get more points, and if someone finishes with a lot of points and comes like right behind you, the multipliers at the end is going to make them beat you, which means you have to do this again. So definitely uh, take the chance to get as many people as you can. But also make sure you don't fall too far back. Yeah, essentially it's uh, kind of like the Destruction Derby rolls thing in the sense that basically you've got to score as many points as you can and wherever you finish is essentially your points multiplier. God damn it, I really wanted to get a decent lunge on that green car. I honestly think that uh, Destruction, not Destruction Derby, Demolition Racer kind of has it very simplified with it. Because you, all you really have to do is just wail on some hits, and if you manage to get a good shot, and you may, or you find like the question marks, you can get like bonus points and whatnot. But cause it, it kind of simplifies it. Whereas with the Shuck and Derby, especially Raw, you really had to nail, you really had to nail some hits or certain uh, actions to have done to your opponents to really, uh, to really score in that game. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, admittedly, you might have seen me trying to spin cars out. That's because I basically have been playing Destruction Derby Raw. And, yeah, you get points for spinning people out. By the looks of it, we might have this race beat because, yeah, they didn't do particularly well. We get third yeah, place. You're... Yep, third place is good enough to, to move on. Indeed it is, because we need to finish at least six. Uh, fifth, sorry. Yeah. Oh, boy. I was about to say, that's not a six. <laughs> It's the Pitbull Speedway, my favorite track in this game. I adore this track. It, this is great. It is actually the best track in the game, even in the Dreamcast version, so I'll give you that. They should totally add this to Forza. That'd be great. I, you know what they need to do? I need, I'm, I'm hoping someone does it, is that for uh, Wreckfest, the, piece, the PC Ooh. game, someone makes a mod of this track. Now that would be interesting. I would love to see that happen. That would be glorious. Also, yeah... Uh, I will say, as far as all of these Destruction Derby-ish games that basically happened a lot in the, uh, the t sort of end of the 90s, this is probably the most fun of all of them. Out of all, yeah, out of all the Destruction Derby games, if you're just looking for something that's kind of like easy to get into and just kind of want to smash and bash, this is the best one to go for because it, it's, it's the easiest to get into. The other ones you kind of have to be a little bit more of expertise or you gotta just be really good but this one is just kind of sure it's going to be challenging especially during the later portion oh god yeah but but you still have you know it's you still have your uh your chance to just you know kind of build up and you know get what you need to get and you know all that kind of stuff yeah I don't know. I'm not wording it very well, admittedly. I, I must say you are the much better one at this game. I, I remember you got many deaths from above in your LP. I'm not expecting to get any, if any. Well, many, if any. There we go. I can rhyme. Getting this, getting deaths from above is is not is still not very easy. I mean, I, the one I still remember is like from part five of No Exit, the Destroyer of Destroyers, where I just basically did the whole Endurance League, and then I just got that Destroyer to maximum of everything. And I had that one race where I got I had gotten like I think it was like I don't know if it was like one or two I think I might have gotten like two death from above in one event I can't remember, but either that or I just got a lot of points. Oh, so close! But, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's actually a little bit more difficult with the Dreamcast version because in the first league here on the PlayStation you have you essentially just have to do fifth or better, but in the, the the Dreamcast version, you have the first lead. You have to come third or better. So, oh wow, which, you know, it still isn't. It still isn't that particularly bad. But if you consider that the next league we're going to be doing, well, Emil's going to be doing here, he has to come third or better. And for the second league of the Dreamcast, you have to be second or better. So yeah. I mean, the so one thing with the it's Dream... actually more difficult in the Dreamcast version. Yeah. Uh, in case you're wondering what he's on about, by the way, they did a essentially a remaster of this thing on the Dreamcast for North America only, which is a shame. Um, yeah, it, it's it's really a shame because 
out of, I, having played every version of this game, honestly, the Dreamcast version is the best. But the PlayStation version is is by far the most accessible because of the whole they they actually released it over in Europe, which is of course where Emil is. And they never ever released this thing in Asia. So nope, sorry, Asia. I'm sure you can probably emulate this thing pretty easily. I mean, seeing how I mean, I I mean they uh, released Test Drive Five. This was a because this is a Pitbull Syndicate game. Test Drive Five, also being a Pitbull Syndicate game, they did release it over in Japan. Uh. And it was distributed, it was just listed as a Capcom game because, you know, Capcom sells better over there because Japanese, uh, de uh, like, publisher and developer and whatnot. Oh, hey, you, you killed someone. Killed someone. And, um... I just need to finish a bit better. Yeah, and basically... Uh, I actually, there was someone on a forum site who actually uploaded an image of the Japanese version, and I played it recently, and I was so disappointed because they actually nerfed the game down a bit. Because every car has the same, every car has the same engine note. Uh, the boat, one of the bonus tracks is missing. Uh, and one of the, it's not nothing too particularly amazing, but there's a little thing I noticed too is that that code that works in the. Uh, we got third, by the way. Yes, again, that code uh, you exact you put you can put to, although which you would normally have to play through the game to unlock. So there's a code in the uh, North American Europe version to get a music to unlock a music video so you can watch for for whatever reason fear factory's replica Ooh. that's not in the japanese version they took that out completely i didn't know test drive 6 was pitbull syndicate it is i should probably test get interested four. in that game test drive 4 was the first of the pitbull syndicate games i remember and isn't they, 4 the one that's supposed to be awful 4 is pretty bad. I will say that it's not very fun to play. Like at I all know one of the test drive games is supposed to be properly bad. Because in test drive four, the physics are really bad. Uh, there's only so few tracks, and the AI is ridiculous in that game. Because if you make one mistake, you you can consider your race over. Mm. It's that bad. Oh Christ! It's so it's so fucking punishing. That's oh Christ! Hi, car. How you doing? Test Drive 5 at least made it easier, where you could have some mistakes and still catch up. And then Test Drive 6, if you've been seeing my, my ongoing Let's Play of that, um, you can it's the same thing. You can screw up and you can, you'll still have a chance of winning, even with the rubber banding, which can be pretty bad in that game. Oh god, the kill boxes. But yeah, I, I used to always think 5 was my favorite of, this, of the Pitbull Test Drive games, but I, I think it... Having played six more, I'm thinking it's actually starting to become six, just because some of the little things they did to make the driving easier in that game, like I think, was better over five. Yeah. So, I will say one thing for this game is it does hold up surprisingly well. Like the handling I, is weird, but like the actual game itself is still extremely fun. Yeah, but the, yeah, the definite thing is out of all the Pitbull games, I think Demolition Racer was their best. It was like because it was so simple with what it wanted to be, and just it, it's just, it's a game you can just easily pick up and play. In it, my opinion, it's smashy crashy car car. I mean, what more do you want? Exactly. I will say though, later on, it really doesn't do that. That endurance league will kill me. I'm fairly certain. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. To be honest. So be prepared for take fourteen, probably. Yeah. Because in this PS2 version, the only car you can get is the Predator. PS2 version. Uh, PS2 version, PS1 version. It's too much Gran Turismo 3, shut up me. Although that <laughs> doesn't have any other versions. What am I talking about? I don't even know anymore. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, the, um, the only car you can use is the Predator, which is um, a weakling. Also, there's a bonus thing, which I missed. It's fast, but it it's fast, but you got to be careful with it because too much abuse and dead... Also, the handling on it is very snappy. It's not particularly too bad, but yeah. I mean, some of the tracks you have to race it on, though, like... This track is sort of a precursor to what happens later on with like tracks like Junkyard, which are very much... You know... ...eight and twisty, which this game unfortunately doesn't do particularly well. Five, apparently. Right. <laughs> My car is looking a little bit sad, but we should be fine because the cruiser is built out of 
godly materials. Also, yeah, I noticed how quick this thing is, and it has a six speed, and it's yeah. <laughs> don't yeah, question it. <laughs> but in regards to uh, going back to Pitbull real quick, they did do two PS2 games, as as that or name. Uh, they did the 2002 test drive, which was just no, which was known in Europe as uh, TD Overdrive. I think it was TD Overdrive or Test Drive Overdrive. I think it's TD Overdrive. I think I've heard that. Yeah, they 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 just listed as TD Overdrive. So I think a lot of people just say it because Test Drive Overdrive is a bit of a, a tongue twister. Test Drive Overdrive. Yeah, the, the Brotherhood of Speed. Whereas we just knew it as a test drive over here because reasons. Can I get first? Um, they did do that yep. one, and then just around the end of them being Pitbull by 2005, they did LA Rush. Oh, God. Uh, but by then, they were bought out by Midway and rebranded as Midway Newcastle, where they really only did one more game after that, which was Wheelman, which is a kind of which Ooh. is actually kind of which is actually a bit of an underrated game. Vin uh, Diesel it's, game. Yeah, like it's a, it's actually a pretty decent game, having played it not too long ago. Yeah. Anyways, we finished but, fourth, which is enough, thankfully. Right. And we move on to parking lot. My second favorite track of all of them. Because it's fun. <laughs> right. I, I love the parking lot track, actually. I'm not a huge fan of the quarry, that whatever we was just on. I think it's quarry. That track isn't particularly good. This one's a lot of fun, though. Yeah, that, that one's a good... I, I like this one that you're at. It's very easy to just wham and bam. Pretty much. It's bad. Also, the interesting thing... <laughs> that too. Uh... Yeah, though the uh, the interesting thing too, though, was that uh, Midway Newcastle, as they were known by the end, they shut down in 09 because, of course, Midway went bankrupt at the same time. Right. And a large group of the people who were working there just formed a new group a year later, just called Pitbull Studio. Right. Uh, they didn't last very long, though. They only lasted about four years because. They got bought out by another company, this time Epic, Ga Epic Games, the people responsible for Gears of War. Gears of War. And, and by that point, they're now known as Epic Games UK. Ah, okay. Is, uh, have they done anything of note? Or do they just uh, help Gears of War games? Um... It's, good, it's a good question. I don't really know... If they, I don't really see anything particularly mentioned because on the, the wiki page and I'm looking at here, it doesn't particularly mention a lot, much of anything, because it just mentions about oh they were became Epic Games UK, and that's about it. Ah, so probably just the sisters though. The interest, right? Yeah, it's kind of interesting how many UK game studios there is. I imagine pretty much they just work on they they they, they are. I imagine just what they do is they 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 kind of help out anything that Epic Games does. So yeah, I mean, uh, when they, when they were Pitbull Studio, they only ever made two developed games. One was called Circus Challenge, and the other Circus one was an Challenge. Android. Yeah, I don't exactly know anything about it. And then the other one was something called an Android game called Big Hop THD. <laughs> Sounds like it a wasn't Xbox it, Live game attack. It kind of does, honestly. It 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 wasn't particularly very very fancy. So evidently not with that name. Also, I made some uh, weird yeah. physics happen a minute ago, apparently. Yeah, and then they, and then they just contributed to uh, Silent Silent Hill Downpour mm -hmm. and Gear, Gears of War Judgment, and it was that latter one that kind of you know oh god brought had epic oh Jesus <laughs> I kind of had epic um, bring them in anyways that shouldn't happen and that's the history lesson of Pitbull so I almost got f oh, I got first place <laughs> just snuck in for that first I don't know what the hell happened at that end that was. An interesting roller coaster ride. 
Anyways, Mad Matt died. Poor Mad Matt. He is dead. Ripping Mad Matt. I will say one last thing. I will say there's about Pitbulls. There was hey, one other place. game they. Hooray! You actually did the best. Uh, there was one other thing they did for the PlayStation. It was a game called Big Air. It was supposed to be like a snowboarding game, like alternative from like cool borders and whatnot. Cool. Boards. It was. It wasn't very good. I, I wouldn't imagine so. Anyways, is that it, or is there another race? <laughs> We're about to find out. Hey. The seizure man is here to wave the flag. Yeah, let's have a random man wave a flag as the colors go crazy to signify that we've done it or he's done it because I'm just watching. Yay, Fear Factory music indicates yes. a win. <laughs> Anything Fear Factory is good, so hey, well, almost everything. Yes, anyways, we have unlocked stuff. We have now the semi-pro league, we've unlocked the chase game mode, we've unlocked the renegade car, which is pretty good, we've unlocked the mantis, which is pretty forgettable, and we have the Leon Stadium, so that's all pretty good. I always pronounce this Lion Stadium, but could be Leon. Probably is. Anyways, that is going to be it for this first episode of Demolition Racer. I do hope you've enjoyed. Um, next episode, we'll probably take a look at the semi-pro league. Oh, the uh, the other one. What is it? The demo arena thing. I'll pick thing. at some point arbitrarily. Anyways, that is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching. And Thunder, what do you want to say? I uh, eat your bagels. I don't know. Yes, eat bagels. There's links to him in channel description. Go look at him. He does cool stuff. Uh, yeah, that's going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching, friends. My name's been The Real Meal, and until next time, farewell.